Al of Utah. It's time for a new F1 2020 trailer detailing the deluxe Schumacher edition. Let's take a look. Michael Schumacher made the jump from sports cars to Formula One at the 1991 Belgian Grand Prix and took the world's breath away. The emerald green Jordan 191 was the machine in which history was to be made. At its wheel, the most successful driver the sport had ever known made his debut and made his mark. One team and one driver ruled the roost in Formula One during the mid-1990s. The Benetton Ford B194 was, at times, unstoppable. It would take victory in seven of the first ten races to establish the foundation upon which the team was to taste its first championship glory. Its successor, the Benetton Renault B195, was even better and demolished the field to bring the German his second crown and Benetton its first and only ever world championship. It romped to 11 victories, nine of which were taken by Schumacher. In 2000, Ferrari gave Michael Schumacher the car which would begin a previously unthinkable run of championship success. The F1 2000. A car which would, over the 17 races that year, deliver 10 pole positions, 10 race victories, and crucially, Ferrari's first Drivers' World Championship since 1979. The Ferrari F2004 delivered Michael Schumacher his seventh Formula One World Championship and confirmed him as the single most successful driver in F1 history. The car would finish on the podium at every single one of the 17 races, winning 15 of them. At the wheel of this achingly beautiful and crushingly fast car, the depth of Michael Schumacher's legacy became undeniable. So, as ever, it's good to see the, uh, uh, the, the retro classic car content coming to F1 2020. Uh, nice selection of cars. I mean, obviously, we've got four cars here. Uh, it's just a small sample, but a little bit of history if you're a Schumacher fan. And I do like the 91 uh, Jordan there, which was very special at the time, uh, seeing him come on the scene. Of course, we have the iconic Benetton. Uh, this was at an era when I wasn't particularly a fan of Michael. I don't have fond memories of this car at all, actually. I considered the fact that there was some traction control there. Michael did take out Damon Hill. Uh, and if you were around in Formula One at the time, you'll know that uh, uh, when Michael Schumacher took out Damon Hill, the whole of F1 pretended it didn't happen. Uh, you know, Murray Walker was too embarrassed. Jonathan Palmer just pretended it was invisible. Um, you know, and I, I remember lots of Formula One people, Sterling Moss going on about how brilliant Michael was without even noticing uh, the, 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 the incident. And it was only in 97 when he tried to take out Jacques Villeneuve that uh, people actually then highlighted this in incident and the... Uh, the one that would, took place in uh, working as well with Mika Hakkinen as well. So it, 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 it's um, interesting era seeing that car for me. It's sort of, uh, and the same with this era as well. You know, it was a very boring era for Formula One. Uh, you know, when we look at these cars and we take a look at the the Ferrari going around there, it it, it wasn't an era that I necessarily look on fondly. It was only when you know, sort of William sort of gradually got up to speed and. Juan Pablo Montoya gave a bit of uh, attitude to Michael that we actually got a bit of racing and then it was great to see the the Renault of, of Fernando Alonso coming into the mix and everything so it wasn't a great era for Formula One and the fact that he had you know Eddie Irvine was stopped from winning the championship and and Rubens Barrichello was limited in what he could do he never felt like we had a race I guess in a way it's a bit like Mercedes dominance now in the fact that you've got Valtteri Bottas who quite frankly is not you know, I would much rather have seen Daniel Ricciardo competing against Lewis. Let's make it mean something, you know. Uh, so these, these cars are great cars, uh, but without the tracks and other cars to race against in the era, for me, they're nice museum pieces. I do notice the lighting this year in the game, uh, more so in this trailer, is a lot softer. They've gone for that kind of, dare I say it, a bit of an old school Codemasters uh, filter across it. It's a very filtered look to it. Uh, I'm not necessarily as keen. I would like to see the sharper white light uh, just giving it a more authentic look than the sort of dreamlike sort of yellowy glow, dare I say it, 
uh, that goes across things. It's a bit old school in the bloom effect. That's something I, I wasn't keen on on Dirt Rally 2 either, was the bloom, the dreamlike look that they're, they're giving to things. I do like the clarity of hard lights, and maybe that's a, a technical limitation. I don't know. But um, either way, great to see new cars. Uh, and uh, for me, you know, it was a form, an era of Formula 1 that, where I was uh, a massively avid fan. You know, I, I really appreciated just the, the dedication and the risk that the drivers were taking, the complexity of the driving, comparatively speaking. Uh, and, you know, the drivers drove the cars. They had to make the decisions. They had to look at the tyres and stuff like that. You know, sensors were gradually coming in. And, you know, of course, by the time you get to the 2000 era, some of the cars were even automatic, goodness. Uh, but, you know, I think looking at 91, you know, I'm going to rate the 91 car is the car that I really you know i'm excited to drive basically it's it it looks great and i I look forward to giving that a spin and testing that on a future video Uh, and looking forward to formula one starting again this year and seeing what happens to these races i do hope they have a reverse grid a lot of people don't but i would like to see something new i don't want to see a carbon copy race after race where we know that these cars are going to do well they've got a better setup they're designed for that course you know i think with the reverse grid you'll bring a bit more to the racing I, I think it would add a lot to Formula One right now. Uh, unpredictability. That's what we want in Formula One. We want racing and unpredictability. And I think it would bring a lot. But it's not going to happen cause, because F1 and teams don't like unpredictability. It's just one of those things, basically. But I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble today. Uh, I mean, these are, as I say, all good cars. I do have my own feelings when I look back and see these eras. And I know people sort of rose-tinted specs for some of them, really. But, uh, uh, you know. Formula One goes through these points. I mean, people will be looking back on this Mercedes era in years to come and call it the greatest era of F1 ever. And for me, generally, it just hasn't been. You know, it's been, it's getting better. It's getting better. And I think this season actually has more potential to be good. But then I've said that before. I think, well, I said that in the last couple of years. And, you know, Mercedes have just gone on to dominate and no one's really pushed them. So I hope that we can get a bit of competition this year uh, and looking forward to seeing the final uh, F1 2020 game but um that's it from me for now as ever more soon hello viewers well thanks for watching the video today do like and subscribe it supports what we do do become a youtube member youtube patreon supports all of our content you see on the channel and of course lots of gaming from retro to modern games i love it all in terms of racing action so click on one of the two videos just there to find out more